Welcome into another video, this time going over the AFC East depth chart. I hope you enjoy. We're going to get into the AFC East now. Uh, let's talk about, let's go at the wide receiver position here. We're just looking at Stephon Diggs, obviously going to be the uh, number one guy, number one go-to. Um, Gabe Davis, he is now the number two wide receiver, came over. Everybody thought he was going to do uh, much, much better uh, last season than he actually ended up being more of kind of a deep threat type of receiver, not really the possession receiver uh, that Stephon Diggs is. Uh, a couple guys that I do like here. Uh, Deontay Hardy came in over from the New Orleans Saints. Normally was a kick or punt returner specialist, but he does have the ability uh, to hit the home run as a wide receiver. Justin Shorter is a rookie wide receiver. You can see on our lads, if you see any of the green names, uh, that, that recognize that it's a rookie for this year. I think Justin Shorter has an opportunity uh, to even take over that number two wide receiver role. I'm really excited for him with what he could do. Trent Sherfield, he came over, played a little bit with uh, the San Francisco 49ers and the Miami Dolphins. Um, he's got some ability in him. Uh, Khalil Shaker, he was actually a serviceable wide receiver last year when his number was called upon with the Bills. Um, he can actually make a little bit of noise. So, I mean, we're looking at the top six wide receivers right here. Uh, and we're looking at a good group of wide receivers that the Bills can work with. Uh, it looks like Josh Allen's going to have some nice tools to be able to throw to. Um, and we're looking at the tight end position, right? Dawson Knox. Um, I think he was an absolute bust last year. He's more of a touchdown dependent type of tight end, a much better uh, run blocker. And they went and got the rookie Dalton Kincaid. He is going to be more working, I think, in the slot than he will have his hand in the dirt. But Dalton Kincaid is an excellent pass receiving uh, option. I really think he's going to be the second target on the team behind Stephon Diggs. I think he'll have more targets than even Gabe Davis did. Uh, and then we're going to look at the running back position. You know, we're talking about James Cook finally gets his opportunity to be uh, the man in Buffalo. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can take. Will he take the reins or will he let some of these other guys take over? Damian Harris came over uh, from New England. He really didn't have the opportunity of his life to be uh, for the Patriots. They kind of moved on from him, came over to the Bills. Hopefully he can have a chance. Uh, he's going to try to uh, un un unseat kind of James Cook as that main running back. But then they kind of threw another uh, mix in the hat there. We're talking about Latavius Murray. When Latavius Murray came over here. He can be a dominant force even at his age. I believe he's 33 years old. He can still make things happen. He can take over uh, Damian Harris' role. He can even take over the first and second down role if James Cook isn't the guy that everybody thinks he's going to be. We just got to wait and see uh, some of the rookies that they got, you know, Jordan Mims, Isaiah Bowser. I'm not really worried about them. Um, Nine Hines, more of a gadget play type of guy. Uh, maybe like a third down back coming and catch a couple balls. That's kind of what you're looking at when you're when you're thinking about Naeem Hines. But um, overall, that's kind of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, let's move on over to another team um, in the AFC East and talk about the Miami Dolphins. Um, the wide receiver group here, I really, really like. There's a lot of talent here. Uh, we're looking at Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill, but one of the best combos you can find uh, in the NFL and for fantasy football. Um, in the slot right now, they have slotted in a Cedric Wilson. He's an okay wide receiver. I think he did really good from um, from Dallas. But uh, he's a serviceable wide receiver that can make some things happen. Braxton Berrios is another receiver that I like coming over from the Jets. I think that he was a uh, very good, especially down late in the stretch of the playoffs. He did really, really well for fantasy teams. Um, Cho Robbie Chosen or Robbie Anderson, whatever you want to call him. He's another serviceable wide receiver. Didn't really play a lot in Arizona when he moved over from the Panthers. Um, and then River Crocraft. Uh, I don't even know who River Crocraft is, but hey, it is what it is. They got a couple rookies out there. Chris Coleman, Daywood Davis, neither one of those. I think will make a fantasy impact um, for your fantasy team. So uh, moving right along, we have a big question mark. You know, we're talking about the quarterback position, right? Can Tua stay healthy? Can he keep from having all of these concussions that's going to be something that we have to kind of look out for and make sure that he can say stay healthy and be on the fantasy team because if he can do something with with these these weapons around he can make some noise for your fantasy team the problem is that i'm just so scared to recommend them to you guys because i don't know 
You know, any day he can have another concussion and be out for his whole NFL career. I do like the backup quarterback that got into Mike White came over from the New York Jets. He was a very good quarterback. He was just an inconsistent quarterback when he was able to get the start for the Jets. And then Skylar Thompson uh, now is a third string quarterback. He was the second string quarterback last season. And he really didn't look too good last year when he was able to step in. Um, a really big thing we could talk about with the running backs here is Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson are the running backs as of right now uh, on the team, but they did draft Devin A. Chain. He is uh, he's like five foot eight. The dude is so small; it worries me uh, to my brink of uh, can this guy even take a hit? But he is absolutely electrifying. He could take any of these balls straight to the house and give himself some fantasy points. He's going to be interesting to see how does he work in. I, I just don't see him being a three down back or the number one running back here because of just merely his size. He has all the ability in the world, but he just doesn't have the size to compete. So it kind of worries me. Um, on that aspect but let's move on here to another AFC East team and we're going to talk about the New England Patriots uh, the Patriots is kind of a work in progress when you when you kind of ask me what I think if we look at the wide receiver positions they ended up getting Juju Smith Schuster over here as probably their number one wide receiver coming over from, from Kansas City uh, Devontae Parker and Kendrick Bourne are still here um, they ended up losing Jacoby Myers but you know, they got in Juju Smith-Schuster to type of replace him. Um, one of these rookies here, uh, Kayshawn Butte, he coming over from LSU. I think he could be a decent option. Somebody you may want to target later in your drafts or in your rookie drafts if you're in Dynasty. Uh, somebody that's kind of a wait and see option, see what happens here. And Demario Douglas, also another decent wide receiver. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be too upset. Um, if he ended up breaking out as well. So two rookie wide receivers that possibly could be doing something. I know there's a lot of buzz right now around Taekwon Thornton doing something uh, to, to just lay it all out here. There's a big uh, cluster, uh, if you want to put it that way, for the New England Patriots. We're not really knowing who's going to be coming out to be in the main guy here or main wide receiver for this team because mostly because of their quarterbacks. Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi. I mean, who's going to be the quarterback there? Uh, Mac Jones is supposed to be the guy, but he's just not pr proven to be consistent enough. And I think Bill Belichick's getting tired of having to coach around Mac Jones. You know, he's just, he's not a Tom Brady. And I think that's what Bill Belichick's problem is. is he's so used to having Tom Brady. Now he's having to go with these young guys and they're just not getting the job done. But now if we go over to the tight end position, uh, they ended up adding Mike Kosicki here. They already have Hunter Henry. So they're going to kind of have another one-two punch at tight end. We'll see how that works. Uh, they tried to do that with Jono Smith last year. It didn't really work. So they're going to have to see, uh, hey, we're going to add Mike Kosicki. I think he's a nice big body wide receiver. He was a top touted wide receiver coming out of uh, tight end coming out of college. Excuse me. Um, so we'll see if, if my, Bill Belichick can kind of maybe rejuvenate his career. That's kind of have to be a, a wait and see type of thing. Um, and then at run, running back position, they ended up moving on from Damon Harris. He ended up going to Buffalo. Um, now they got Ramondre Steven is the bona fide number one running back there. Doesn't have really any competition for him at running back. Ty Montgomery, James Robinson, Pierre Strong, even Kevin Harris. Some of these uh, running backs, they're probably going to sprinkle in from here and there. Probably give you a little bit of headache if you have a Ramondre Stevenson on your football team. But for the most part, I think Ramondre Stevenson is going to be a really good back for you uh, this season. Um, and then we'll see where it goes. But the last team that we're going to talk about today uh, in the AFC East is going to be the New York Jets. Now, the New York Jets... Everybody's excited about this team. You know, there has a huge opportunity for them to be um, to be a, the go-to team in this division. Maybe even make noise to have a, a Super Bowl push, all because they signed um, Aaron Rodgers. But let's go over the wide receivers here. Uh, pretty good wide receiver core: Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, Miko Hardman. Really, the top three ones that were that we're really looking for. Um, hey, Bud Files, morning. How are you? Um, but those are the, those are the top three wide receivers we're really looking for. Uh, Randall Cobb ended up coming over um, from the the Packers. We have Denzel Mims, who has been historically kind of type of upset with his role um, with the Jets. He's been wanting to move on. The Jets aren't getting rid of him. Um, Corey Davis also there as well. So six serviceable wide receivers there. No rookies. Um, all veterans there for Aaron Rodgers to kind of build a rapport with and kind of you know build up what type of of actions they can take with the jets so uh running back we're kind of 
kind of stacked at the running back as well. Um, Brees Hall coming off an ACL injury. He should be really, really good for this backfield as long as he can be back for week one. He should have a dominant season for you. Uh, even though coming off ACL injuries is a little bit weary for me, he's ready to go. He's pumped because he has Aaron Rodgers. They got the rookie Israel at Banacanda. I think he's a good serviceable running back. If anything would to happen to Brees Hall, especially if you're a Brees Hall owner, I would definitely go out there and maybe spend a higher draft capital for uh, Israel at Banacanda just to make sure you have a little bit of insurance back there. Zonovan Knight as well. Um, he actually felt in quite quite decent for Brees Hall when he went down last season. And also we know about Michael Carter. He's a good third down back as well. So at tight end, Tyler Conklin and CJ Uzama, two tight ends that can just get the they can just get the job done. Um, Zach Kuntz, he was a tight end that the Jets ended up drafting. I actually like that guy. I think he can be um, a good tight end of the future. Learn behind these guys at Uzama and Con uh, Conklin and see what happens. But as of right now, uh, CJ Uzama and Conklin is going to split that, that timeshare at the tight end position and be really, really good for you for the, for the New York Jets. So, But that definitely wraps up the AFC East. As always, thank you for watching the video as we continue to pop out weekly videos to help you best prepare for your fantasy football leagues and ultimately win a championship. I can't wait to see you guys on the next video. We'll see you guys next time.